Hello, my name is Jeremy Sylvester from Urban Dubs Music and Loop Wax. Welcome to our first lesson, uh, part one. Uh, part one is all about uh, finding drum sounds, looking around, digging through your old record collection or your CD collection or your old MP3s or, you know, just having a flick through and just seeing what's, seeing what's around, you know, and rather than using presets and sample packs, which is great anyway, but it's actually more fun just kind of finding your own sounds, you know, going through, listening to, listening to some of your old records, you know, you might find a nice little kick from that record or a nice little snare from this record or a nice hi from that record, you know, collating it, collecting all those sounds, creating your own kit and pack and uh, using it within your own productions, you know, creating something new and fresh and exciting, you know. So that's all part of the, this is all part of the creative process, right? You know, it just makes it more interesting and uh, rather than just relying on, on sample packs and, you know, just makes it more fun, you know, and uh, makes the whole creative process more interesting as well, yeah? So, yeah, let's, let's get cracking on. Okay, uh, so let's get started on finding drum sounds from other sources. Uh, a good way to find drum sounds is from your vinyl collection, or if you have one, or from your CD collection, or your MP3 collection, or even some of your, some of your own tracks that you've made in the past where you've created a really, really good beat, and you know, you know, you just want to get that beat again, but this time, you know, manipulating it in a way um, you know, making it another, making it fresh, making it original once once more. Um, you know, using drum sample packs you've bought from websites online or presets within your software instrument is great. But it gets even more interesting when you actually go through some of your old tracks, your own vinyl, your you know, your CD collections, and just looking for new sounds, you know, that could possibly work, right? So you know, sampling from your own vinyl CDs gives you another perspective. Usually the sounds you sample from these sources are, are, are already processed, you know, already EQ'd, already compressed and have a certain feel or vibe about them, which you don't really get from cleanly manufactured sample packs and presets, yeah? So sometimes a little bit of rawness or a little bit of grittiness will give your drums a little bit more edge, especially for house and garage music. Um, or any kind of underground music, you know. Combining sounds you've sourced through these processes with sample packs and presets will again give you a unique sound which you can call your own. Um, you never know what you'll find when looking through vinyl CDs, which makes the whole process more fun and exciting, as you can accidentally stumble across a sample that sounds absolutely amazing when used in a percussive way. Uh, you know, this can again spark off new ideas and new ways of thinking as you go through the creative process. Um, this way of working was the way most house producers in the 90s operated. Um, this is the way I used to work, um, which is why some people feel house and garage music produced from that area, from that era, so I should say, from that era, sounded so much more exciting, you know, arguably. Um, it makes sense, as back then you had to think on your toes, you had to be a bit more creative, uh, software nowadays a lot of the hard work is done for you in some cases and people tend to get a little bit lazy because of it so but that's just my take on it um, so with this course I want to try and just try to encourage you a little bit uh, to be a bit more creative and try to think outside the box uh, there's no rules so just make your music how you feel and don't be afraid to experiment from time to time all right so enough of my blabble um, so yeah, you know, I'll get cracking on now. You know, I pulled up one of our Urban Dubs music releases to show you how you can borrow elements from another drum loop, then manipulate it and create it your own and create your own drum pattern from it. We want to take the parts that we like from the drum pattern, then we will, you know, we want to slice it to MIDI across the MIDI keyboard and then have a little play around and see and see what comes out of it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go, uh, we're going to find a track. Uh, I've got a track in mind. Uh, it's one of our releases, so Mr. Boot Source, a track called House Me. It's actually one of my mixes, uh, Sly, on uh, Strictly Dubs remix. Um, there's a bit, there's a nice bit of drums 
right at the end of the track, which I think we could use, we could chop up and, ma and manipulate. So I'm gonna put it into an audio track and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so we've got it here on the audio track. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna drop it into complex mode here. And then, like I said, there's a clean section of drums right at the end. So I'm gonna go into it. Now I'm going to play the track and uh Okay, so you might you might have noticed at the start there's a crash symbol which we don't want. So we're going to find a bit where there's no Chris where, where the crash symbol ends and we can find a nice clean bit from there onwards. So I think uh there's a good bit that starts at one at one five one. So let's have, let me just double check that and see. Okay. Yeah. So let me move the starter position to one five one here, and I'm going to zoom in a bit so we so we can see where we are. I'll play it from there. So as you can see, it doesn't quite start at the right position all right so we need to move the start point which we've highlighted with the warp mark with the warp marker and just uh align it dead on dead on the bar okay so it's starting exactly on 151 so if i play the, the clip again now it's starting bang on the beat all right so let me zoom out a bit and this particular loop is not very long, so I'm gonna loop it over a bar, okay? So let me play that, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna click the loop button right here, and then I'm gonna play the track. In fact, let me double it, okay? I'm gonna double it to here, and uh, let's play that. Okay, so we got that. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna find some slice positions, okay? So at the moment, we've got the first warp marker on the first slice, okay? Then we're gonna take elements such as the, the clap positions and some of the hi-hat positions as well, okay? So what I like to do is, uh, what I like to do is just kind of do this, just kind of highlight all the main parts here, like this. So the first one we've got the kick, then the clap and the kick, then the kick comes in again, and the kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, okay? All right, so, and in between that, you've got the hi-hat bits as well, so you've got hi -hats, open hi-hats there, open hi-hats there, open hi-hats there, some of them, might be slightly different from others. So the first hi-hat might sound slightly different from the, this hi-hat here. So it's always good to just, um, with a loop like this, which is not very long, um, it's just highlight all the main parts like that, okay? Each one of these warp and mark positions Will actually be a slice on the MIDI keyboard. All right, so each one, each one of these will be a slice, which we can manipulate and change up and play around with on the keyboard. All right, so so now that we've highlighted all the positions that we want, okay, the next step now is to um, click on the MIDI on the on the audio file. Okay, I'm going to right click on it. And then what we want to do, we want to slice to new MIDI track, okay? Now, a box will come up and it's asking you what you want to do with that. So, at the moment, we want to create one slice per warper marker, okay? These warper markers that we've created here will be a slice on the keyboard, all right? So that's what we want. So we leave it on warper marker there, 
and then uh, leave the slicing preset to built in and then we click OK. OK, so now it's generated a track, uh, a MIDI track with these uh, sliced up drums which we created and so now I can get rid of the audio track we don't need that for now and so we'll just concentrate on this here now if I press the keyboard the elements now of the drums of that drum loop we've chopped up and uh, we've got it across the keyboard so now let's have a look let's go into it now and just see what we can do with it now some of these some of these sounds some of these slices are the same all right like for instance slice one is the same as slice nine Okay, so for slice nine, we can just make we can change it up a little bit. You know, we can uh, if we if we highlight the slice, okay, and double click on it, it will bring up the the it will bring up the simpler instrument, right? Now, supposing I wanted to edit that, shorten the note. Okay, what you do, you zoom into using your mouse, you zoom into the waveform like this, okay. There's a little s snare right at the end of it, which I don't really like. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna edit it. Just move the end position of the waveform so that I can get rid of that little thing at the end, get rid of this snare at the end like that. All right. Oops. But what, what I would like to do now I think it could sound really cool if uh, if we reverse that, reverse that kick, right? Now at the moment, because we're in simpler mode with this particular slice, right? It doesn't give you the option to reverse. So the way to do it is to right click on the slice, then where it says simpler to sampler. See simpler is a simple version to sampler. sampler you could do so much more editing in that plugin or um, in that uh, device. So we want to change that to sampler, all right? So here we go. As you can see, it's got far more, it's got far more options. You know, it's got the uh, pitch. You can change the filtering elements. You can change the modulation. You can change the MIDI parts of it. So we're going to go in. We're going to leave it back in the sample uh, tab here. And uh, what we're going to do? We're going to zoom back into the waveform like this. And uh, if you notice at the bottom here, it says reverse and it's been switched off. Right? If we switch it on, it's reversed it. Simple as that. And then again, we can go into the edit and we can change things around we can start we can mess around with the start point or the end point all right so we've got two options now so we've got that kick and we got that all right so another thing we can do is uh, maybe we can reverse one of the claps so I know we've got two or three claps there at the moment which we don't we, we don't need all of them so uh, I'm gonna flick through some of the sounds that we've got all right so we've got slice three is a is a clap but also slice seven let's reverse that so again we highlight the slice, um, then we right click 
and simpler to sampler. Switch the reverse on. But I want to go deeper into the edit and just, you know, just kind of fine tune it a bit. So we, we're zooming in on the waveform here. Making sure you've got the right, a good, a good start point. Okay, so we've got the slice three clap and we've got the slice seven reverse clap. So, so excuse me, so as we're building, we can play around with that, with those two. If you remember back in the day, uh, especially back in the speed garage days, um, this is how they used to chop up loops and uh, reverse certain bits, you know, particularly producers like Armand van Houden, Spin Spin Sugar. Um, this, is how, this is the way they used to do it. Chop things up like this, reverse certain elements of the, of the drum loop and just basically create your own beat, you know. And there you have it.